Hi, I'm Dr. Bobby Pritt. In this month's Hot Topic, my colleague, Dr. Brad Karen, will discuss recent information on the advantages and disadvantages to using butterfly needles for blood collection. I hope you enjoy this month's Hot Topic, and I want to personally thank you for allowing Mayo Clinic the opportunity to be a partner in your patient's health care. Thank you, Dr. Pritt. For those of you who have not attended our phlebotomy conference here in Rochester, the title of my Hot Topic video today, Phlebotomy Top Gun, may seem a little odd, but I hope I'll be able to explain to you what is Phlebotomy Top Gun and what we try to do at our annual phlebotomy conference. Today's Hot Topic video presentation will address the use of butterfly needles for blood collection. I have no disclosures relevant to today's presentation. Every year at the Mayo Clinic Laboratories Phlebotomy Conference, I present a talk that's always called Phlebotomy Top Gun. The format of Phlebotomy Top Gun is a case-based presentation. I solicit from you, the attendees, cases, issues, or questions that you would like to hear about. I present these as case-based scenarios and using an audience response voting mechanism, the attendees of the conference vote on the action or answer they feel is appropriate to the case. I then present the collective experience from our practice and the evidence and data I can find in the literature reported on the topic. At the end of the case, attendees vote again. For each case, I can see whether I've been able to change anyone's mind on the question at issue by presenting data and information relevant to the particular topic. This is an actual case from a phlebotomy top gun presentation at last year's phlebotomy conference in Rochester. In the case, the question was, which of the following are currently demonstrated to be true regarding butterfly usage? Answer A, butterfly usage increases hemolysis rates. Answer B, butterfly needles cost more than vacutainer needles. Answer C, use of butterfly needles increases the rate of percutaneous needle exposures. And answer D, all of the above are true. At this point during the live conference, attendees using the audience response system would vote for the answer they thought was most appropriate or correct. We get to see in real time the distribution of results from our audience. There have been a number of published studies examining the effective use of a butterfly needle, especially a smaller gauge butterfly needle, like a 23 or 25 gauge needle, on rates of hemolysis and blood samples. This slide demonstrates the results of one such study performed by Dr. Lippi and colleagues in 2006. In the study, volunteers had three separate blood draws using three different types of butterfly needles. Experienced phlebotomy staff did all the blood draws using a vacutainer adapter, so you might say this was optimal conditions for blood collection using a butterfly needle. Fourteen different chemical analytes were tested from the tubes collected using either 21 gauge, 23 gauge, or 25 gauge butterfly needle. On average, the results of the biochemical test did not differ between collection devices. However, potassium and AST, the chemical analytes most sensitive to the effects of hemolysis, both increasing with more free hemoglobin present in the serum or plasma sample, showed much more variability in the 23 and 25 gauge device compared to the 21 gauge. In fact, the variability in potassium results was twofold greater when a 25 gauge butterfly needle was used to draw blood compared to a 21 gauge butterfly. This is one of many studies demonstrating that hemolysis, or the amount of free hemoglobin present in serum or plasma samples, is much more variable when small diameter butterfly needles are used for blood collection. These authors therefore recommended that 25 gauge butterfly needles be used only for newborns or patients with very small veins to avoid rejection of blood specimens for excess hemolysis. The study by Lippi and colleagues that I just highlighted is one of many studies that have historically been used to justify limited use of butterfly needles for blood collection and very restricted use of small gauge 23 and 25 gauge butterfly needles. More recently, at least one manufacturer of butterfly needles has reconfigured their devices to address this issue. In the end, hemolysis induced by collection in small gauge butterfly needles is due to the small diameter inside the needle that blood must travel through to reach the syringe or vacutainer adapter. By manufacturing a device where the wall of the needle is smaller, one manufacturer has produced a device that has the outside diameter of a 25 gauge butterfly 
while maintaining the bore size or internal diameter of a 23 gauge needle. Both data from this manufacturer and internal data collected at Mayo Clinic suggest that this device maintains two fill rates and levels of free hemoglobin or hemolysis that are typically observed for a 23 gauge butterfly device. This device was also reconfigured with additional beveling to decrease pain associated with venipuncture. In recognition of the fact that some advances in manufacturing have allowed the production of small gauge butterfly needles that may not increase hemolysis rates, guidelines from the Clinical and Laboratory Standards Institute have now been changed uh, to reflect that the use of some 25 gauge needles increases the risk of hemolysis and rejected specimens. Previously, these guidelines suggested that use of any 25 gauge needle would increase the risk of hemolysis. Among the most commonly cited concerns about butterfly needle usage is that percutaneous needle exposures and the risk of infectious disease transmission associated with accidental needle sticks in healthcare workers could be increased with the use of butterfly devices. This study from Yale University examined needle to stick exposures over a two year period from 1993 to 1994. Three quarters of accidental exposures were due to the use of a hollow bore device. Among these, lure lock syringes were the most common, followed second by butterfly needles, and third by vacutainer needles. Looking at the rate of percutaneous exposures, the rate of exposure was four times greater with a butterfly needle compared to a vacutainer needle blood collection. This study is one of many that demonstrated that use of butterfly collection needles does in fact increase the risk of occupational exposure associated with percutaneous injuries. One reason, and likely the primary reason, that butterfly needles did result in more percutaneous injuries was the mechanism of safety device activation. In the past, butterfly needles required a two-handed safety device activation, such as pulling down a sleeve or sheath to cover the needle after blood collection. This required removing the needle from the arm and activating the safety device prior to disposal of the needle. This study describes a performance improvement initiative to reduce percutaneous exposures at one hospital. Prior to the intervention, rates of percutaneous exposure were threefold greater when butterfly needles were used to collect blood specimens compared to vacutainer collections. The intervention in this study was to implement a push button retractable butterfly needle, eliminating the need for two handed activation of the safety device and allowing for safety device activation prior to withdrawal of needle from the patient's arm. Over time, the exposure rate associated with the newer butterfly device came down to lower than the rate originally observed for vacutainers. These authors concluded that the use of a new butterfly device with one hand push button safety activation was as safe as use of a vacutainer needle for blood collection. Not all sites want to use a push button retractable butterfly needle device, so this study demonstrates results of a similar quality improvement safety project within a hospital, where the intervention in this case was to implement a butterfly needle with a safety sheath, which did require a two-hand activation of the safety device. While implementation of a butterfly needle with a safety sheath did reduce percutaneous exposures, rates remain much higher than exposure rates associated with vacutainer needles, and staff continue to have exposures due to incorrect activation of the safety device or staff simply choosing not to use the safety sheath or device. This study and others like it demonstrate that to make butterfly use safe, or at least as safe as vacutainer needle use for staff collecting blood, butterfly needles with the push button retractable safety device should be used and staff should be trained to never withdraw needles uh, from patients without activating the safety device first. Because butterfly needles do cost substantially more than vacutainer needles, one question that labs often ponder is why do so many nursing staff choose to use butterfly needles for blood collection? This qualitative study asked nursing staff and clinical assistants exactly that question. Interviews were conducted with 11 nurses and 14 clinical assistants trained for blood collection and themes were described from the transcribed interviews. Four themes emerged. Nurses and clinical assistants liked the mechanical features of the butterfly. They found it easier to manipulate a butterfly needle compared to a vacutainer. They felt the butterfly collection was appropriate for sicker patients or patients with poorer veins. And they used butterfly needles when they perceived that patients had or might have poor veins. 
These results are probably not all that surprising to many people listening today who are responsible for overseeing blood collection, but they do lend some evidence to commonly perceived or accepted reasons why people choose to use butterfly needles. Because I can't go over all of the data and evidence I would normally present in a case at the phlebotomy conference and that I in fact presented last year, um, on this slide I've attempted just to summarize the material I presented during this case on butterfly usage last year. Many of the reasons we have cited for avoiding butterfly blood collections in the past may no longer apply to butterfly needles due to improved design of some devices. In particular, use of a 25 gauge butterfly needle with a wider bore and use of a push button safety device activation have reduced concerns related to excess hemolysis and percutaneous exposure of healthcare workers. While I did not have time to cover all this material today, we have noted within our practice here at Mayo Clinic that use of butterfly needles for blood collections can still lead to hemolyzed or clotted blood specimens. And this is particularly true when there are many blood tubes that need to be collected or very large uh, orders for blood collection. Thus, use of smaller gauge butterflies is best limited to pediatric patients or patients with small veins. Institutions should do everything possible to encourage or limit usage of butterfly collection devices to only those with a one-hand push-button activation safety device. Strategies that have been effective to limit butterfly usage include training staff first with a vacuum container device before they're allowed to try or get comfortable with a butterfly, education of staff on the cost and potential downsides of butter cl butterfly collection, particularly the use of butterflies when multiple blood tubes must be collected and the associated, at least in our experience, increased risk of hemolysis and clotting when collecting multiple tubes with a butterfly. And if all else fails, uh, simply limiting access to butterfly devices to pediatric areas or areas where their use is likely to be required. At this point during the phlebotomy conference, I would then return to the original question that I polled the audience on. The attendees at the conference would use the audience response system to vote again, and I would share with the audience what I believe is the correct or intended response to the case or question. Based upon the available data and our collective experience here at Mayo, my opinion is the single best answer to this question would be option B. It will always be true that butterfly needles cost more than vacutainer needles, or at least until someone makes a much cheaper or less expensive butterfly. While we have identified specific situations, such as large blood collections or the need to collect multiple tubes, where butterfly needles in our experience may increase the risk of hemolyzed or clotted samples, more recent evidence suggests that this is not universally true or true in all situations. Use of butterfly device with a one-hand push-button safety device activation does not appear to increase the risk of percutaneous exposure for healthcare workers compared to use of vacutainer needles. So again, in my opinion, the answer to this case would be option B. Thank you for your time and attendance today. If you liked today's presentation, or even if you didn't, please do consider attending our next phlebotomy conference on April 23rd and 24th, 2020, here in Rochester, Minnesota. Learning takes place via both large group didactic sessions and small breakout sessions that allow more interaction with conference speakers. Tours of Mayo Clinic facilities are also offered during the conference. Thank you for listening today and have a wonderful day.